Hello, my name is Steve Olson. I'm the manager of training services with Mesa, and I would like to take a look uh, in this screencast at a workflow where we're able to read values off an IPART table using iLogic and then configure the, the mating components up according to those sizes. So what you'll see here in this model is I have a piece of pipe here. It is actually an eye part. Uh, it actually has a, a lining to it and then there's two flanges here uh, that go to that part. And typically what I do in a situation like this where I have users key in parameters and then have iLogic search to table, the, the scenario as I, I was in with recently with a customer is they actually were placing uh, the main piece of pipe through the name uh, or selecting it through the member name of the part and then they wanted to size everything else accordingly so it was an interesting workflow and I thought it was uh, would be a, make a great uh, screencast here so let's take a look at how this is done so all I've done so far is I've made up my my pipe as an I part my flange here is an I part as well my lining is an individual just standard piece of pipe or uh, standard component uh, at my assembly level, I created a multi-value parameter that is just a little drop-down box that has all the different member names of the different members of pipe of the main pieces. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to control that piece through that value and then read other values off the table so I can size the flange and the lining appropriately. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start an iLogic rule here and I'll call this configure it's a typical name I, I call my main driving rule in iLogic so the first thing I want to do is underneath my iPart snippet over here in my browser tree I want to use the change row snippet that will allow me to say well change that iPart to the appropriate member row which is basically what my, my drop down is going to control so I'm going to use this change row snippet. It's basically going to ask me for a component name. So I'm going to highlight this component name here. Uh, I have this piece of pipe from up here in my, my model view of my browser here. When I go to names, that pipe will show up. So I can double click. So now I'm looking for pipe. And now I want to tell it to look for the member row name. But what I can do is actually just tell it to look for the value of my particular parameter. I pipe part number. So basically I'm telling it to look for what I need to do now. What I need to do now is I need to use the current row value snippet that will read certain values off my table into variables here in this rule that I can then use and pass to the right value. So I'm going to use this current row value snippet. I want to look for, I'm going to use pipe OD and I need to read in. Uh, in that rule, I actually called that OD. So I'm just going to say OD here. I'm going to just actually copy this line and use it for the other two variables that I need. So the other two variables I need to look at is my pipe ID. And that was stored or on the OD length. Or, I'm sorry, the ID column. I'll set this to length. And that was in the length column of that I part. So now all I need to do is I need to pass my pipe ID value into my lining. I need to pass the length value into the lining and then I just need to have the flange piece search through and find all the occur or find the right occurrence uh, of the flange to match the OD of the pipe. So I'm going to actually create a little um, just, a, just a notation here that I'm going to be dealing with the lining. That just that basically the apostrophe lining just is a code it's just commenting out that line so I know that I'm that's what I'm dealing with here. So I'm going to now in the upper portion here, dig through my, my lining, 
find its model parameters and I can set up code that will set those values according to the variables I have here. So here's my pipe ID. I can say that's going to equal pipe ID. My length is going to equal my length value. Now for my flanges, I can use an IPART find row string that will look through that. So I'm going to, again, comment out flanges. Use my find row snippet. So here it's going to say IPART find row, and I have to list out my component name. So it's going to be flange 1. I have two flanges, so I'll have to set up for both. The column name I'm going to search for is pipe OD. And again, that's just a column inside that I part. I'm going to search for the variable that I have for pipe OD. And, th and that snippet is set up to search at two columns. I have sometimes just needed to just search one column. Sometimes I need to search a couple. Uh, so now I'm going to copy this line and just make another one for flange 2. Now you'll also notice the beginning of these lines here where it says i equals i part find row. Basically what happens in these rules is if it can't find the appropriate i part, it'll set that i equal to negative 1. So I know I've got all my possible values covered, but it would be a probably it would be a good idea for me to do a quick check just to make sure and give myself a message box if this ends up failing some way uh, somehow. So I can use an if then and if say if i equals negative 1 then I can use the message box snippet here to use a show and see so basically it needs me to fill in a message and a title so I'm going to say it cannot find the needed flange And the, the title of that will be configure, or whatever my rule was called in this case. So now that I have this, as I say, if I say OK here, I should now be able to go to my parameter here. That was my selector of which piece or which pipe is going to be used. I can cycle through each one. You'll see that the lining on the inside of that pipe is changing to match the, the, the pipe. The flange is also being matched to match whatever the OD and the ID. So I was able to set that through the I part, um, you know, set the, select the member, and then, based off of that, pull the right values and set those up. So thank you for watching this screencast. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, please like this video and share it with your friends. Thank you. Have a good day.